assume log of 2 with the base b is equal to a and log of 3 with the base b is equal to b, capital B, and log of 5 with the same base b is equal to capital C. We want to evaluate log of square root of 25 over 36 with the base b. So let's write this down. We have log of square root of 25 over 36 with the base b. The first thing I want to do here is, is to expand this. If you recall, one of the properties that we had, if you have log of x over y, if my argument is a quotient, then I will write this as log of x minus log of y with the same base b. So here I'm going to write this as log of square root of 25 minus log of 36 with the base b. The goal here is to make this equal to log of 2, 3, and 5. So we're going to look for a factor of 2, 3, and 5 here. So for 25, square root of 25, that's already is 5. So that's easy, log of 5 with the base b. So I already have log of 5 with the base b is equal to c. So here I know this is equal to c already. I'm done with this part. This is c. I need to write 36 as some factors of 2, 3, and 5. Now, 36 is the same as 4 times 9. So let's write it as log of 4 times 9 with the base b. Here I have my argument is a product of xy. If you recall, log of x times y is equal to log of x plus log of y with the same base b. So I can write this as log of 4 plus log of 9 with the base b. And this minus belongs to both of these terms. I'm going to use a parentheses. Log of 4, here I want to make it look like log of 2. So this would be log of 2 squared plus log of 9. I want to make it look like 3, so it would be 3 squared. So now I need to use my next property where my, my argument is a power of something. If I have log of x to the power of n, I can write this as n times log of x with the same base b. So in this case, I can write this as log of 5 with the base b minus I'm going to move this 2 right front of log of 2. That would be 2 log of 2 is all base b. Plus, I'm going to move 2 front of log of 3. And I'm, I'm almost done. So that would be log of 5 is given to me equal to c. I'm going to write this as c minus log of 2 is given to me as a. It would be 2a plus log of 3 is given to me as b, that would be 2b. I can go ahead and distribute the minus. So this whole thing would be equal to c minus 2a minus 2b. Find the domain of the function f of x equal to log of x squared minus 1. So we should know that x squared minus 1 must be greater than 0. Must be greater than 0. This must be positive. So the argument must be positive. In order to solve for x, I need to factor this. This is difference of a square would be x minus 1 times x plus 1 must be greater or equal to 0. 
So let's take a look at my number line here. This is zero here. I'm gonna locate plus and minus one and look for the region that would make my expression positive. So I need to pick some test point then. The best test point probably would be zero. If I substitute zero here, zero would make the first parentheses negative. I only care about the sign of these. Zero would make the second parentheses positive. The product of that would be negative. Is that what you want? No, you want the product of this would be positive. So any number between negative one and one cannot be the solution. All right, we can pick a test point two and do the same thing for two. Two would cause the first parentheses becomes positive and the second parentheses also positive and that's exactly what we want when the product will equal to positive. So any number from one to infinity would be part of my solution. If I want to write this in interval notation, I will write one comma plus infinity or just infinity that would be part of my solution. If I pick a point like negative two as a test point, negative two would cause the first parentheses to become a negative number, and also negative two would cause the second parentheses to become a negative number, negative times negative would be positive. Again, that's exactly what I want. So any number from negative infinity to negative one also should be the solution. So I'm going to union that with all the number from negative infinity to negative one, not including negative one, I'm going to use a parenthesis then, would be the domain. So that would be the domain of f of x. For an investment of $1,000 to grow to 1400 in five years, we use this formula. Part A, what rate of interest compounded monthly is needed? So I'm going to substitute the given value in this formula. My A is equal to 1400. P is equal to the principal, which is 1000. Then I have one plus, the rate is something that I don't know. It's unknown, I'm gonna put R for right now. N, in this case, it says compounded monthly. So N must be equal to 12, 12 month. And then here to the power of, again, N is also 12 again. And T here is given to me as five years. Time is given, five. So I have everything except R. Pretty much we have to solve for R. I can divide both sides of the equation by thousand. So I get 1.4 is equal to one plus r over 12 to the power of 60. 12 times five is 60. In order to solve for r, I need to raise both sides of the equation to the power of one over 60, because I want to eliminate the 60. So 1.4 to the power of one over 60, it really is the 60th root of 1.4 equal to, now I have one plus r over 12 here. To solve for r, I need to subtract one from both sides of the equation, and then to solve for r, I need to multiply both sides by 12. So it would be 12 times 60th root of 1.6, 60th root of 1.4 minus one, and that is R. And that's all I have to do is just plug this number in my calculator and it should get R is about 6.75%. For the second part, find the doubling time to four decimal places. We're gonna use the same formula. So we would write two times 1,000 equal to, he stills 1,000 times one plus, r over 
n times nt. I can divide both sides by 1000 here. So I would get 2 is equal to 1 plus r. I already figured out from part a is 6.75. I'm going to write it as its decimal it would be point. 0675, that's my rate from the previous part. N still is 12, N is 12, and here we want to solve for T. I can go ahead and calculate what I have inside the parentheses using my calculator. So it would be 2 is equal to divide 12 into 0 0.0675 and add 1 to that. You would get 1.56. To, five, to the power of 12t. Now the variable that I'm solving for is appear to be at the exponents and I cannot make the base the same so I need to take a log of both sides. So I have log of 2 is equal to log of 1.5625 to the power of 12t. So I'm going to use the property if you recall, if I have log of x to the power of n, I can write this as n log of x. So I can move the 12t right front of the log. So this would be 12t times log of 1.5625. And other side, I just have log of 2. All right, so now I can solve for t by dividing both sides by the coefficient of t, which is equal to 12, divide both sides by 12, also divide both sides by log of 1.5625, so we can isolate t. So t then would be equal to log of 2 over 12 log of 1.5625. We need to use our calculator here. So if you plug these numbers, it would be t is about 10.30. The amount of carbon-14 after t years is given by the exponential equation. A of t is equal to A0, or A initial, times e to the power of minus kt. And k is given to me as log of 2 over 5730. That's just a number, fixed number. Find the half-life. For part A, you're just going to write 1 half A0, or A initial, is equal to A initial times e to the power of minus kt. If I divide both sides by a0, then I would get 1 half is equal to e to the power of minus kt. To solve for t, because t appears at the exponents, I need to take a natural log of both sides. So I would get natural log of 1 half is equal to natural log of e to the power of minus kt. Let's recall some of the properties. If I have natural log of e to the power of x, because the base is e, this whole thing would be equal to x. So in this case, at the right-hand side, we have natural log of e to the power of minus kt, base is e, so you would get minus kt for the right side of the equation. So minus kt is equal to natural log of one half. So t then would be equal to dividing both sides by coefficient of t, which is minus k. t would be equal to natural log of one half over minus k. We can use our calculator here, or we can use the properties that we learned. If you recall, natural log of x over y is equal to natural log of x minus natural log of y. So you can write here as natural log of 1 minus natural log of 2 at the top of the fraction over minus k. But k is given to me as this fixed number here. I'm going to replace that with natural log of 2 over 5730. Natural log of 1 
is equal to zero, you can add this to one of the properties that you have, natural log of one, the base is e, so if you want to know what that is, you can actually calculate it, that would be e to the power of y is equal to one, so y must be equal to zero, anything to the power of zero is equal to one. So natural log of one would be equal to zero. So t then would be equal to natural log of two over these minus and minus would reduces over natural log of two over 5730. So that's all we have. Some fixed numbers here, we can calculate those by substitute plugging these into our calculator. So you get 5730, that would be T. For part B, a bone contains 15% of the normal amount of carbon-14, estimate the age of the bone. So we're going to use the same formula here, we get 0 0.15%. Of a zero then would be equal to a zero times e to the power of k is given to me as natural log of two over five thousand seven hundred thirty so we're going to use that for a formula times t we're solving for t as you can see if I divide both of the equation by a zero for a initial that would be equal to one now I need to take a log or natural log of both sides in order to solve for t because the variable you're solving for is the exponents and we cannot make the base the same. So I write this as natural log of 0.15 is equal to natural log of e to the power of this k minus natural log of 2 over 5730 times t. If you recall, if I have natural log of e to the power of x, this would be equal to x because the base is e. So here my base also is equal to e. So on the right hand side, I would just get the exponents minus natural log of 2 over 5730 times t is equal to natural log of 0.15. So to solve for t, I have to divide both sides by coefficient of t, or in this case, multiply both sides by reciprocal of this coefficient. So that would be 5730 divided by minus natural log of 2 times natural log of 0.15. This is all constant. You need to substitute those into your calculator and you should get T is about 16,608.9. This population of a town after T years is given by this formula. Part A, what is the initial population? For part A, you're looking at T e of zero, which is equal to 5,000, e to the power of 0.2, now t is equal to zero in this case, anything to the power of zero is equal to one, so this portion would be just simply one, one times 5,000 would be 5,000. For part B, when will the population double? So we're going to write as 2 t0 would be equal to 5,000 times e to the power of 0.2t. We're going to solve for t. So in this case, I have 2 times p0, we already figured out is 5,000. If I divide both sides by 5,000, I should get just 2 is equal to e to the power of 0.2t. We're solving for t, we need to take a natural log of both sides because the variable you're solving for is at the exponent's level. And we cannot make the base the same. So I will write this as natural log of 2 is equal to natural log of e to the power of of 0.2t because the base is e on the right hand side you only get 0.2t again the property that we had before if i have natural log of e is equal to x if i have natural log of e to the power of x this would be equal to x because the exponent is e here the same thing we have here natural log of e to the power of 0.2t so the right hand side we only get the exponents to go to natural log of 2 to solve for t i need to divide both sides by 0.2 so t then would be equal to natural log of 2 over 0.2 so that would be for part b if you substitute this into your calculator you should get about 3.47 years 
for part C, when will the population grow to 8,000? So you write 8,000 is equal to 5,000 times e to the power of 0.2t. Here we can divide both sides by 5,000. So you get 8 over 5, which is 1.6, equal to e to the power of 0.2. 2t. Once again, we're going to take a natural log of both sides to solve for t. As you can see, the right-hand side can use the same property we used before. We do equal to 0.2t is equal to natural log of 1.6. Divide both sides by 0.2, then we can solve for t. The t would be equal to natural log of 1.6 over 0.2, which would be about 2.35 years. Find the coordinates of the center and the radius of the graph of the equation is given to me here. So they're giving us a hint that this is a circle already. So I just need to write this in the form of general equation of the circle. If you recall, that would be x minus h squared plus y minus k squared is equal to r squared. In order to get this equation look like the general equation of the circle, I need to complete the square. I need to complete the square twice. So I'm going to gather all my x, x squared minus 4x. I'm going to perform the completing square method on these two terms. And also, I need to gather all the y's. It would be y squared plus 2y. Complete the square here and then I can actually move the 31 to the other side. I don't need this now, it would be plus 31. That would be part of my radius. So I'm going to take the coefficient of x divided by 2 and you square it. Before I do that, I want to make sure the coefficient of x squared is equal to 1, which it is. So you take the coefficient of x, which is negative 4, divided by 2 and you square it. And that's the number you need to add into the first parentheses to complete the square. Minus 4 divided by 2 would be negative 2. Negative 2 squared would be 4. So I need to add 4 inside this first parentheses. I can add 4 and subtract 4 inside the parentheses or just simply add 4 to both sides of the equation. So I'm going to write 31 plus 4 here. So I'm adding 4 to both sides of the equation. We do the same thing for y. We take the coefficient of y, which is 2. We divide it by 2, and you square it. We want to make sure that the coefficient of y squared also equal to 1, which it is in this case it is. So it would be 1 squared would be 1. I need to add 1 to y squared plus 2y in order to complete the square. Again, I can add and subtract 1 inside this parentheses or just simply add 1 to both sides of the equation. Now, by doing this, these two parentheses not only are factorable, also would be completed the square. You would get x minus 2 times x minus 2. That's how you would factor this one. So it would be x minus 2 squared. As you can see, that would be my h. My h appears here to be equal to 2. Similarly, here would be y plus 1 times y plus 1, which is the same as y plus 1 squared which would be my k. My k would be minus 1 here. So if I just simply add the numbers, the right-hand side, 31 plus 4 plus 1, they give me 36, and that is my r squared. Okay, so I have my center, h and k, then would be 2 and minus 1. So my center, my radius would be square root of 36, which is equal to 6. Find the coordinate of the center and the radius of the graph of the following equation. Here we need to combine all the x here would be x squared plus 3x. Then we have y squared plus 12y. I need to complete the square for both of these. And then I'm going to move this 50 to the other side of the equation becomes minus 50. So for the x, I'm going to take the coefficient of x, which is 3, divided by 2, and I square it. That's the number I need to complete the square. I want to make sure the coefficient of x squared is equal to 1, which it is. So it would be 9 
fourth. So I need to add nine fourth here would be x square plus three x plus nine fourth. Now when I add nine fourth to the left hand side, I also need to add nine fourth to the right hand side of the equation. So I won't affect the original equation here. So I have minus 50 and then I have to add 9 fourth to the right hand side as well. I'm going to continue with the y. I take the coefficient of y which is 12 divided by 2 and you square it. It would be 6 squared which would be 36. So I need to add 36 to y squared plus 12y. Once again I need to add 36 to both sides of the equation. So it would be plus 36 over 1. So as you can see here you would get x plus 3 half squared plus y plus 6 squared. When you combine what I have at the right hand side, the LCD is 4. You multiply this last term by 4 over 4, multiply this by 4 over 4. You get 4 times negative 50 plus 9 plus 36 times 4 over 4. You would get minus. 47 over 4. So there would be no solutions here. There would be no solution for this one. No solution. For this example, we want to find the coordinate of center and radius of the following equation if it's possible. In this case, we need to gather all the x with x squared plus 2x plus y squared minus 6y is equal to, I'm going to move the 10 to the other side, becomes negative 10, and perform the completing square method. You take the coefficient of x, you divide it by 2, and you square it, you would get 1 squared, which is 1. So I need to add 1 to x squared plus 2x, and at the same time, I need to add 1 to the other side of the equation. Similarly, I'm going to take the coefficient of y which is negative 6 divided by 2 and you square it they give you negative 3 negative 3 squared would be 9 so I need to add 9 to both sides of the equation now you notice that you get x plus 1 squared plus y minus 3 squared and in the right hand side these adds up to be equal to 0 so this is just a single point Here we want to identify the graph. So what we need to do here is to make this look like a general equation of the conics that we studied. This could be their ellipse, circle, hyperbola, cannot be parabola in this case because both x and y are squared here. So let's write this as 4x squared plus 9y squared is equal to 36, move the 36 to the other side, and looks like this is the equation of ellipse. If you recall, when you have an ellipse with the center at 0, 0, you would write this as x squared over a squared, then we have plus y squared over b squared is equal to 1. This is the general equation of the ellipse when the center is at the origin. So in this case, if I divide each term by 36, you can see that would be equal to 1, and we're definitely looking at the equation of the ellipse. We don't have to graph or anything in this case. That's all I have to identify this, so that would be the ellipse. Here I want to identify the graph. And in this case, if I divide each term by 10, I would get x squared plus y squared is equal to 90 divided by 10 would be 9. And this looks like the equation of the circle. If you recall, if I have x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared, that would be circle my radius is the square root of 9 which is 3 so this is circle here we want to identify the graph in this case if you recall 
the general equation of the hyperbola was x squared over a squared minus y squared over b squared is equal to 1. The only difference between the general equation of the hyperbola and general equation of the ellipse is this sign here. If it's minus, that would be hyperbola. If it's plus, that would be ellipse. And looks like in this case, we can divide this term by 10 to let everything would be equal to 1. It would be x squared over 10 minus 3y squared over 10. It can be reduced is equal to 1. So that is the hyperbola because we have x squared over 10. That's my a squared minus y squared over 10 over 3. This is my b is equal to 1. So this is hyperbola. Write the equation of the circle and graph them, and we know the center and we know the radius. So if I write the general equation of the circle, which is equal to x minus h squared plus y minus k squared is equal to r squared, so all I have to do is just substitute the values for the center. So this is my h, this is my k, and this is my r. So my h is equal to 3. So we would substitute here 3 would be x minus 3 squared plus my k is equal to negative 4. So negative and negative would be positive here. And my r is 4. So would be x minus 3 squared plus y plus 4 squared is equal to 16. To graph this, I would locate the center, which is, which is 3 and negative 4. So I'm going to move 3 units to the right and 4 units down. This is my center. And my radius is 4. So from the center, if I move 4 units up, down, right, left. So that would be my circle would look like. Find the vertex, focus, and directrix of the parabola. Y is equal to 3x squared plus 12x plus 8. Indicate which way the parabola opens and sketch the graph. Just by looking at this, I can see my parabola would open upward because the coefficient of x squared is equal to positive number. To find the position of the vertex, we can use a shortcut, which is the formula of v of x. This would be x position of the vertex, which is equal to minus b over 2a. Either use this formula or rewrite this equation in terms of its general equation of the parabola, which requires you to complete the square then. It would be easier to use this formula. x position of the vertex always would be equal to minus b over 2a. In this case, my b is a coefficient of x, which is equal to 12. It would be minus 12 over 2 times my a is equal to 3. So it would be minus 12 over 6. So my x position of the vertex would be minus 2. To find the y position of the vertex, we substitute for each x negative 2 in our equation and solve for y. So it would be 3 times negative 2 squared plus 12 times negative 2 plus 8 and that will give me the y position of the vertex which is equal to negative 4. So vertex then the position of the vertex would be negative 2 comma negative 4. It is a point so we're going to show it as an order pair. So if you recall the formulas for the directrix and the focus, we need to evaluate C. C is equal to 1 over 4A, which is equal to 1 over 4 times 3. Your A is the coefficient of x squared, which is 3, would be 1 over 12. So the position of the focus then would be equal to H comma K plus C. Now we know C, we know H, we know K. So that would be the same as minus 2, comma, you just simply add K plus C, that give you minus 47 over 12. The directrix would be equal to 
y is equal to k minus 1 over 4c, k minus 1 over 4a, which is the c, or simply k minus c. And you substitute the values here, you get minus 49 over 12. We can find the x and y intercept as well. If x equal to 0, y would be equal to 8. This is where my graph going to intercept on y axis. And for x intercept, you have to let y be equal to zero and solve for x you should get two points for that that requires you to solve for 3x squared plus 12x plus 8 equal to 0. Solve for x. You can use the quadratic formula. Minus b plus and minus b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a since this is not factorable. When you plug the numbers there, you would get x is equal to negative 2 plus and minus... 1.15 so you get the two values one would be minus 3.15 and the other one also would be minus 0.85 about yeah and then the graph of this also can be shown here this was a solution was posted for you before as you can see the position of the y intercept and x-intercept and the vertex are here and this problem opens upward we knew that because the coefficient of x square is positive and we have all the information that they're asking us here graph the ellipse the equation is given to me we want to find the center foci and vertices and eccentricity for all these we need to remember our formulas if you recall the general equation of the ellipse was x minus h squared over a squared plus y minus k squared over b squared is equal to one so we can see the center just by looking at the equation is given to us in the form of general equation is equal to your h is minus one and your k is five so that's the center and we know a squared minus b squared is equal to c squared. So I know my a is the square root of 36, which is equal to 6. So a squared would be 36 minus my b squared is 9. Then I can solve for my c. So c squared here would be equal to 27. So c is equal to plus and minus square root of 27. So the foci, I lose f, then would be two points there, would be minus one plus square root of 27, comma five, or minus one minus square root of 27 and five. The vertices then would be located at negative one and eight, negative one and two, negative seven and five, five and five. Eccentricity, the formula, is equal to e is equal to c over a would be square root of 27 a is 6 that would be about 0.866 remember when it was less than 1 we confirmed that was the ellipse if it's greater than 1 would be hyperbola and we have all the information we need to graph them so you can see the graph and the solution that was posted for you it's right here you can locate the center and graph the ellipse. Graph the hyperbola using A and B. In this case, looks like the center is at 0, 0. Otherwise, we had x minus h squared, y minus k squared. So the center is, in this case, is located at 0, 0. So I'm going to start with that. I'm going to locate the center. This is where my center is. Now, as you can see, this hyperbola start with x square first. So on the x-axis, I'm going to move square root of 16 to the right and left from the center, which is 4. So I'm going to move 4 units to the right and then 4 units to the left and then on the y-axis, I'm going to move square root of 9, which is 3 units up and 3 units down. And then here I want to form the rectangle here. 
Once I form the rectangle, the diagonal of this rectangle would be your asymptotes. So these are your asymptotes. Because the x comes first, your hyperbola would open on x-axis. So you start from this point here, that would be one of your vertex, and your gra graph gonna get closer and closer to this asymptotes, kind of like a parabola. It gets this way closer to this asymptote, get closer to this asymptote. And also the other one would be from this edge here, get closer and closer to this asymptote and so on. So this is a graph of your hyperbola. It's also asking you to find E. So let's write the formula. C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. So C squared is equal to 16 plus 9. C squared is equal to 25, so C is equal to 5, square root of 25. So eccentricity E would be equal to C over A, which is equal to 5 over 4. And as you can see, this is larger than 1. That confirmed that it's not ellipse. If, the, if it was less than 1, that would be ellipse. Larger than 1 would be hyperbola. And we can also use our formula for asymptotes. Y is equal to 3 fourth X, and Y is equal to minus 3 fourth X.